Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to the Extremist Ultimus mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. America Lover. But we got some comments to go through. But Haddock takes Delaware Valley after securing um, the New Jersey. The Legions marched upon the city of Brotherly Love, banning around the city. The Legion linked up with our partisans and laid siege to the city. There's a great deal of apprehension about our first attempt to take a city, especially as the police department was less ideologically captured than many others. Fortunately, Fervis has shown himself to be a cunning commander. The Black Legion reached out to multiple local gangs, allying with them against the police in exchange for loot. The additional forces, although disorganized, were enough to distract the defenders of the city, allowing the full might of the Legion to bear down. The surviving gang banners are being integrated into the Legion as we speak. We need the reinforcements for assault on the Durbaba Peninsula. The Legion grows. Awesome. Marines stand against Haddockism. The border between the U.S. Marine Corps and the Haddock's Republican Union grow more militarized by the day. Although the both sides currently lack the ability to conduct a large-scale offensive, it's clear to the one that one will have to be conducted some time. Until then, a standoff is still it's all that can be accomplished. Darn them, and after the storm. Operation Tommy first, though. So. The class of authority currently happening in America is only a matter of time before the army made its play. That time seems to be as now as acting President Harris has announced the U.S. military will be granted extensive operational autonomy in the regions of the U.S. still under federal control. They have the power to declare war on loyal, disloyal domestic forces, enacting martial law and administer their own territory while ostensibly under the control of an interim government. Many have accused this of being the first steps towards military junta. Many local governments under military occupation have lodged complaints, but is it known whether they will be heard or not? Good thing that we're, they're out west and not here. Latter-day Saints, starting early news from Utah, which is not surprising, as the federal government has begun an immediate withdrawal of troops. The move comes on the heels of a sudden push for independence from the federal government. On behalf of Salt Lake City, the newly independent nation of Deseret has vowed to defend its territory from all communist degenerates and oppressors. I don't cut you for not second, first come, first serve. With a breakdown of federal authority that the government has returned to the local level, in many areas in the western U.S., this has made the native reservations de facto independent, today at least for the Navajo. The de facto has become de jure. Jonathan Nez has announced the Navajo Nation will declare itself an independent sovereign nation following a 65 to 35 percent referendum vote. I'm quaking in my boots. Oh, that's interesting. That um, they even 35 percent would even say uh, vote to say, "Hey, we'll stay." Unreached Stone Range. The U.S. Air Force has announced today they intend to concentrate all their airplanes and personnel within the Upper Midwest. Given the modern aircraft of the range cover most of the Army's operational zone, the Air Force argues that this will allow them to protect their critical personnel and equipment from the front lines. The move was applied by both President Tulsi and U.S. Army Chief James McConville. Darn, I wanted to steal a jet. Uh, before we read after the storm, we got this guy. That's not a good portrait of him. Papal condemnation. Uh, the Navajo Nation under Nez. So the U.S. Army, led by McCon McConville. Mommy Telsey's still here. United States Air Force under Charles Brown. Um, Confederation of America is looking pretty good. Refuge of the Right. Yeah. Despite the fact that a secession statement explicitly denounced Nazi, neo Confederate, and fascist ideals, has done little to actually stop the flow of right wing extremists in our nation. Most people feel still the South is the primary bastion of right wing uh, views in America, regardless of how true that may be. He should hate Haddock. He should love them with every fiber of his being. The Black Legion marched in his neighborhood. He remembered the fires, the screaming of the neighbors, the power cuts, and uh, the roving bands of looters. But the more the time passed, the more the horror seemed to last, well, horrible. He remembered his neighbor being dragged out of his house and shot on the front line, and the fear and disgust he felt. But looking back on it, in all his years of living, there never actually been one to see a talk to the neighbor. Actually, he never talked to any of his neighbors besides the occasional greeting or acknowledgement. Who were they? What did they do for a living? The Legion said a lot of stuff, and how they were the minions of bankers and politicians, and had worked to keep them enslaved and poor. He didn't really believe it, but aside from the empty house, things weren't were much different with his neighbors gone. And the looting directed by the Legion's men? Well, he didn't like admitting it, but he'd been out there a few times grabbing cases of beer and new kitchen utensils. Hey, nobody else was using them. And someone else was probably going to steal them anyway. So he maybe got a few new toys out of the Legion, and maybe he didn't really care that the people he didn't know were gone. They could still hate Haddock, except he couldn't. Because as soon as the Black Legion rolled out, a new group had rolled in. Another Haddockist militia. But they weren't the organized rabble of Black Legion and came to loot and burn them and terrorize. They brought food and water. I said, medical, medical clinics, free of charge. They got the power and the water back on. They seem to know everyone's names. They mediated disputes and patrolled the streets. Heck, the guard even had given him a job. He was responsible for helping distribute food aid to his fellow citizens. Every day he went out with the fellow brave officers of the guard, handing out MREs and canned goods to the lines of grateful people who flocked to the guard's shelters. He had a purpose. He should have hate Haddock. He wanted, to, him, he wanted to hate Haddock, but couldn't bring himself to do so. The siege of Washington begins. Oh, God, they got left in North Carolina. Actually, whoa, the Marines actually... Oh. The Marines actually changed colors here. Oh, I see. Oh, they're all which makes sense. Um, or do they change colors? It's just really hard to see. It's, it looks a little red, though. Um, the Legion taking the, the, the Marva Peninsula. Although small cells of divisions still lurk in rural interior. Um, they're be swiftly being hunted. 
by our brave legionnaires. Our forces are setting up encampments in strategic areas along the Chesapeake, preparing for the day when we finally march into DC and crush the liberal regime. Nice. All right, so we got to make sure we do okay. We're fine there. Five divisions does not seem like enough, in all honesty. Um, the Marva Peninsula. Um, you do one hell of a job. <laughs> well, I don't like splitting up forces, so after you come back here, where are you at? Can we hire anybody else yet? No. The Lone Star inside the state capital building. I don't give a darn what those Confederates think about Southern unity. Texas practically birthed from an independent mo independence movement. It should end that way. Such rhetoric was common during the meeting between Ted Cruz and the rest of his cabinet. Despite initial objections, the initial independent spirit was just too strong for most to overcome. Assume some yeehaws are in order. The Texas uh, Republic of Texas is fine in well, Texas. They're also advancing into Oklahoma. Honestly, you might have Atlanta as a capital. I was thinking you'd have Texas lead the Confederates. I mean, yeah, they want to be independent and whatnot, but... If Texas leaves, more states are going to leave after that, and then and they leave, and to have you know unity and power, they would probably combine, at least be allied. They can be independent, but still be allied. A change of strategy. The mass protests and left-wing rallies on the West Coast have come to a head today as a mob of red-clad mil militants storming the California Capitol building and placed Governor Newsom under people's arrest, taking as a signal mobs of communist aligned militia stormed government offices and police buildings across the West Coast. Gloria La Riva has given support to this uprising, throwing the weight of the communists all trying over it in support of the militants. The thin veil of loyalty to the feds has been dropped, and the communists have thrown down the gauntlet revolution. This keeps getting worse, doesn't it? Which makes sense why it's only down here. I guess somewhat in San Diego, yeah. Definitely LA, San Francisco. But uh, Northern California makes sense why it doesn't work. Oh, well, look at this. Disorganized revolution. Factionalized leadership. Anti-communist resistance. Revolutionary car bombings. That's kind of cool. Um, liberal hesitancy. And the spirit of revolution. Legion gets more aggressive. While our territory is secured from major uprising, the same cannot be said about minor annoyances. Throughout RUA territory, there are some uh, guerrilla groups uh, and resistance cells. While they're weak and disorganized, they're not harmless. The recent wave of bombings and guard officer assassinations demonstrate these. Fortunately, Fervus has brought the Legion to bear against these upstarts. But may lack restraint and concern for collateral damage. The sheer terror the Legion has begun to inspire makes it worth it. The weed must be ripped out of the root. The jackboot is down. The Black Legion successfully marches the Maryland state line, leaving a trail slaying divisionists in those wake. The guard marches after them, securing the territory for a cause. In the process, the crypt, crypto divisionists among the Legion have been swiped out, sent into ambushes of meat grinders. Those that remain are fanatically loyal and remarkably adept at irregular warfare. As such, loyal and incompetent veterans cannot go un unrewarded. The Black Legion has officially been subsumed into our forces. We have called them back into our territory to be organized into a proper division of troops under Fervis's command. We have yet to push into federal territory proper. To our west, the Marine Corps has secured loose control. To the south, a pocket of federal troops has coalesced around Washington and Baltimore. And to reports that Baltimore is in a state of open rebellion, with a mix of anarchists and libertarians fighting off federal troops. Oh, look at this. The remains of the Baltimore PD have been subsumed into the guard cells, and Price is confident that we'll be able to establish order in Baltimore without directly confronting the Freds. If not, it's no real loss. Let's see how he handles it. Um, People's Volunteer Army? I mean, I don't mind using that group, no. Nice. The Black Legion, that's cool. Just one more division, alright. 12 combat with this is decent, it's not great though. Anchors away, it's surprising to absolutely no one. The Navy took over whatever island's possessions the federal government still controlled headquarters. Our headquarters in Honolulu, the head of the U.S. Naval Force retained uh, control over the Pacific and Atlantic territories and bases. As the Army is quickly becoming landlocked in the interior, the ability for the Navy and other branches to actually cooperate is questionable. It's currently believed that they'll attempt the Naval Legion to link up with friendly forces. Doesn't seem relevant to us. State of Texas. Boston Falls, the Legion is taking control of our western flank, bringing in our borders right of the land condition. Celebration has been muted due to the existence of one troublesome spot, Boston. The city has proven unusually defined and well organized. The first Legion column to enter Boston proper was cut down by IEDs and rooftop snipers. We still not gain full control of the city, although plans for crushing this resistance has been written up as we weak, as we speak. Oh, we actually got all of them. Nice. Actually, that helped out. Oh, crap. Oh, my God. Well, thank, thank Jeebus. up to 12 that's actually pretty good um because we need someone right literally right there too because that's a separate tile uh, the rest of you guys can just go right here then state of texas coup d'etat in austin's former governor rick perry asserts control oh god rick perry's back Oh god, it's a split Texas. What the heck? Almost immediately after declaring independence, the Lone Star State finds itself in crisis. Rick Perry, with the backing of several major oil companies and a fundamentalist Christian militia, has seized control over much of northern Texas. Ted Cruz's administration has been moved to San Antonio in response and has vowed to oust the oligarchs and dominists. 
Dominionists getting out of hand. Now there's two Texases? Why would we bring back Rick Perry? Oh, look at that. The, they actually got parts of Oklahoma. Nice. The U.S. gives up on SoCal. What revolution? When a revolution erupts, erupts in California, most members of the status quo fled south, establishing a loyal pocket around San Diego, which makes sense. The interim government, headed by the governor Houston, helped to link to the Navy and Army together. together. The Army and Navy together. However, mass resistance strikes and cons of fighting with the partisans has led the military to abandon this approach. Most recent reports indicate that most military personnel are evacuating the area. The only elements of the California National Guard and Newsom's own security team remaining seem to be moving towards the northwest, hopefully, likely hoping for more loyal locals and better fighting conditions. For his part, Newsom insisted to retake California from the Red Menace. Given that he's the only governor of a patch of desert and the army seems to be leaving him to his fate, these threats seem ludicrous. Great. Which, open for business. After the Mormon took over Nevada, many of you wonder about the status of Las Vegas would be given a status as now a city of sin. They haven't wondered for long as a city mayor, uh, Jamie McDowell announced independence from both cities and surrounding Clark County. In response to attempt to crack down alcohol and other activities deemed sinful by the Deseret administration. Vice overcomes virtue as per usual. Interesting. Nevada sides with Deseret. Oh crap! Oh my god, no they don't. <laughs> Uh, today in Nevada, authorities have announced that they will merge their anti-California efforts with the desert, creating a unified front against the Red Menace. Shortly after, the desert forces enter Nevada, linking up with the National Guard forces loyal to the Silver State. Reaction on the news has been mixed. Many Nevadans have announced a move, citing Deseret's authoritarian reactionary occurrence. Many other Nevadans have welcomed the move, asserting the need to defend against the radicalism of California. Nevada does not seem like it will soon. Um, which is interesting, because you know, I was thinking over here in California. Like, uh, Northern California isn't super left. I don't know. I don't, I don't live in California. They seem more independent, so I would imagine that when you have Idaho spawn, because they're still have Spokane here. A lot of Oregon is like, you know, left leaning, but like parts of it want to become like greater Idaho. So, of course, the population wise is radically different, but still. Our investments pay off. Greater Nikes, holy crap, what the heck. For several months now, we've been providing aid to a fellow traveler in Canada. Stephen Garvey's an idiot, but he's proven himself to be quite a useful idiot. Today, he and the band of disorganized militia managed to secure control over the Canadian lands of the Northeast. The Borealian Union state can be better described as a farce. So far, Garvey's militants have yet to actually kill anyone, and their method of control consists of taking over a local brewery and bribing people with beer. Garvey's own understanding of haddockism is non existent. Most of his haddockist policies are de degenerate policies of our own. Still, as the brazen open rebellion against Canada is a distraction for our northern uh, neighbor. Every day, Garvey makes a fool of himself. Today, the eyes are away from us. Peaceful, too, at least. Hey, you're going to be in a faction? Maybe not. Everything's bigger in Texas, even Texas. So I promise it's wanting nothing to do with the CSA. The despotic Perry regime has made a move in the CSA controlled Oklahoma and western Louisiana. There's no doubt this involvement uh, involves uh, large oil reserves in the state and more access to the Gulf of Mexico. It gives the greater Texas state more control of the former oil, American oil reserves. You know, the boards are all blobby now. Honestly, if that was Ted Cruz in this scenario, I'd be like, alright, we got to ally with the Confederation of America. Back in contact. At a period of radio silence, contact has been made with the Rangers that maintain Yellowstone National Park, which I've been to. Due to the rugged and underdeveloped uh, nature of the region, the Army Administration has given autonomy to the National Park Service in exchange for maintaining the lifeline between Central Army Command and the Northwest Front. They're just going to sit there? It's a beautiful place. <sighs> Centralized control. Of the sixth branch of the U.S. military gained direct control on Hawaiian Island. America's space branch arsenal is now so fully safe from hostile forces. General Lee Lauder has uncontrollable uh, limits on the research autonomy they can ever have with their now limited budget. While the Space Force may not have much territory personnel, they control over USA's satellites and ballistic missile protection system. That's long as made them a respectable power among the military cliques. Watch the skies. I forgot about Space Force. That's the Navy. Leia Louder. Well, alright. Lifting of the boot. The, the jackpot of the Black Force, the Black Legion forces stomp down streets and breaks down doors throughout the Northeast. The Black Tide seems preordained, unstoppable, except in Buffalo. When the Legion marched on the sea, they were met with a gunfire and barricades. Many of the walls was a motley crew, anarchists and cop, rioters and communists, citizen militia and defecting soldier. Everyone who was prepared to make a stand against Haddock's madness. After exchanging gunfire, the Legion was forced to retreat. So far, Haddock forces have not uh, attempted to retake the city. The impromptu militia, dubbing itself the uh, Buffalo Revolutionary Council, has begun to reach out to the various populist groups which have de facto control of the Great Lakes. They apparently have formed an open alliance to resist both Haddock and the federal government. Well done. National Separatists. What a lovely day. The sky's a phoenix. We're choked by brown and sand, by sand and smoke. Across the city, fires rage unchecked, the black plumes mixing with the screams of victims and the roar of engines. Packs of vehicles wander the streets, plundering all who got their eye. They've been doing this for over a week. Loose bands of biker gangs and low lives and deserters, but today was different. They're drifting into the city center, drawn by a name they heard over the CB radios and campfire tales. 
I congregated on the blazing asphalt of a Walmart parking lot. Hard men, bikers with black leathers and mean faces, desert rats with du dune buggies and rifles, cameo class survivalists and orange suited convicts and deserted troops with bits of tack rigging still on. All looked towards the face of the war looted store where <clears throat> a military humpy sat, adorned with skulls and ro stolen Rolexes. Above the vehicle on the roof line were three people, a fat terrified police officer bound with chains, a grim looking biker with a megaphone and the legend himself, Xerxes. He was dressed for the road, masks, leathers, armor, he looked out upon his gathered disciples. Listening to them as they revved their engines, Xerxes waved his arms and the engine stopped as his assistant raised the megaphone to his face. Xerxes began to speak. Brothers! <laughs> the world's fallen, no more law, no more cops, no more anybody tells us what we can and cannot do. He spoke with a thick Australian accent, and a few of his men had trouble following him, nevertheless. They roared with approval, the weak cow were under their beds. I ask you, brothers, will you join him? No. That's right, while society falls, we'll rise. We are the immortals, we are the phoenix, we are by our own hands, and we rise from the ashes of this world. More roars, more cheers. Xerxes looked about and knew the time had come. Brothers, he called and bent over. The crowd watched as he brought up a chainsaw and revved it. The cop made a final scream of tear before the rolling teeth sunk into his jugular. Xerxes threw the body from the roof and screamed to the crowd, Brothers, today we ride! With that, he leaped into the back of the Humvee and his vehicle peeled out of the parking lot. It was followed by an army of revving engines and bloodthirsty men. The vermin will inherit the earth. The immortals. What the heck? Why? Does it want to be like the Make America mod again? But just be like, be funny? Great King of Kings, holy crap. Jesus Christ. I'm talking wrong, I'm interested in playing all these different nations, but shout out the battle cry of freedom. Another day, another rebellion in North America. The town of Rovig Band of Outriders and Ranchers, led by a person known, known as the public by, as Big Peep. It started when the U.S. Army attempted to move mass amounts of material through the region to support their forces in Idaho. The response is Big Pete and his followers ambushed convoys, stealing a large way amount of materials and new recruits. The band is loosely organized, it seems to be composed of libertarian and anarchist militias. All that hardware, and they can't beat some old Coon's cowboy posse? Montana Free Territory. Are you Machno? No, you're Big Pete. Look at this, you're gonna buy this anarchist. Screw ahead. Wild West Division, huh? X Kun Q Unum. Well, I would live Oh god. Uh, well, you know what? I guess Columbus could be better than than Chicago. Oh, I hate Chicago. The anti haticus resistance that began in Buffalo now claims the Great Lakes region for itself. The Great Lakes Revolutionary Council is now its calling itself stands against Haddock, the Feds, and Communists, and vows to defend the American heartland against all tyrants. However, the fledging nation already seems to be on a borrowed time. As the lens of populist and revolutionary movements, the only thing the Revolutionary Council can seem to agree on is down with everyone else. Every faction within the Council has their own ideas on the direction that nation should take. Many, particularly in rural areas, seek a decentralized populist democracy. They run in fierce opposition from left-wing groups, who argue that this is a chance to create a truly revolutionary state based on syndicalist and social democratic principles. And both groups oppose the most radical suggestion being pushed by a group of industrialists and venture capitalists, a postmodern republicism inspired by the national separatist thought. It remains to be seen whether or not these internal issues will strangle the council in the script. Oh, Jesus. Battle of Seattle. The army secured East Washington and began a con offensive against the communists. Army troops sweep through the rural areas where their support is higher and march on Seattle, however. The council dug in and captured the weapons from deserting army and national guard units. Force indicate the army's push in the suburbs of Bellevue. Have been met with heavy resistance. It's a clash. Between the army's superior firepower and momentum versus the rebels' entrenched defenses and Pierzio, whoever breaks first loses. Interesting, but it doesn't concern us. Greenback boys. People defined under the, oh god, uh, Re Republican Union. <clears throat> as records of revolt against a tyrannical regime, led by Sergeant Records, and Second Command, uh, uh, Commander Kenneth, a band of local uh, forest men and veterans who made a stand against a haddock. Realistically, there's little hope of. Though, for the revolt due to the size and nature of their conflict, however, the guerrilla insurgency will likely hamper hacks forces and infrastructure. Commanded crushing sons of guns. God dang it. In the last of cities. Seems as though the cracks in the Great Revolutionary uh, Council have uh, fully opened. For weeks, the American Metropolitan Union, an alliance of industrialists and capitalists, have been pushed for the GLRC to adopt a national separate system. Earlier today, the AMU took the initiative. <coughs> And announced that they've established their own autonomous economic zones around Chicago and Detroit. Using corporate security forces, they established control of the city centers and outlying areas, proclaiming that they would now serve as a autonomously governing territories. While still technically part of the GLRC, it's now a de facto independent nation. Many of the socialists and populists are furious, calling the AMU a corporate fac factum. Although the AMU claims to be developing a new uh, uh, dynamic system of postmodern republicanism, a lot of economic activity, many claim it to be industrialized feudalism. Regardless of how the rest of the GLRC feels, though, they're currently lacking the coordination, military strength, and a unity opposed power grab. Interesting ideology, at least. Garbage. U.S. Navy bombed Seattle. The U.S. Navy has initiated a coastal bombardment of the greater Seattle area in support of the Army advancing to the area. 
While the army had an initial success securing the Snake River area, pushing into the suburbs, their advance stalled to the weather, logistic issues, and the heavy than expected resistance. Second order to condemn the actions as desperate, dying gasp of the Imperial Beast. The first reports coming in, while the full results aren't known, it seems that the Communist forces have yet to retreat. Pretty baller live leak videos, though. <laughs> Jesus. Is anyone else here going to revolt? Army forces retreat. After multiple days of intense fighting, the army began its full retreat from the Seattle area. Supply problems, manpower shortages, guerrilla raids, and bad weather broke in the momentum built up in an attempt to secure the Northwest. Village is the king of U.S. soldiers trudging through snowy mountain passes, desperately attempting to reach friendly territory. While well, the army attempts to secure the interior Rockies, the Reds have begun to utilize abandoned or captured equipment. Although the Communist forces are largely militia-based, Gloria La Riva has begun making the first moves towards building a proper army. This failure comes on the heels of multiple other rebellions and territorial losses. Reports of factionalism and internal cliques are already coming out of the army autonomous zones. Most measures taken by the top brass, but a government could splinter. The enemy of my enemy? Probably is my friend. Oh, come on. Collapse of American society, the rest wants more. Nice. Long road ahead. Oh, we're at war with these guys, are we? No, I got the Union line is broken. The former territory of the U.S. is still split between revolutionaries, warlords, military juntas, roving gangs, and tyrants, and all manner of worms. And yet we still live clinging to our core territory. The collapse is over, and now comes a long, hard road to flight. Ever to unite the nation, and achieve our goals, we must prepare for a grueling military campaign before someone else does. Let's bide our time as we save the game and sip on some coffee. Alright. So there, oh, actually, Sal, talk about more divisions. You just hold. We don't have enough divisions to, like, do anything else. Oh, Castle of the Veil, look at this. Time's coming to put democracy in the grave where it belongs. We need more divisions. Question of industry. So we finally have more focus tree we can finally do. Jesus Christ. Hunt down the divisionists. Like rats fleeing from rising waters, the scum within the Republic who refuse to conform, flee from our justice. Our sword of unity will cut them down like the shaft before the thresher. I am God and Kaiser. Caesar. Haddock and Haddock alone will shape the future of humanity. The revolutionary names of Lenin, Washington, and Napoleon are nothing before his greatness. Okay. So what can we do here? Seize the division's assets. Current division's ideological support. Expected change in division's influence this week. Oh, you get more stability. That's nice. Weekly division's unity. Fa fascistic recruitment drive. Weekly war spark goes out. That's interesting. Socialistic recruitment drive. Information crackdown. Taking pre-war administrators. Huh. Propaganda, war measures, economic policy, prospect for resources. Um, what can we do here? Forced labor. That's different. War economy would probably be best, but I want to get some army XP as well. Oh, I guess we can't. I want get some air safety, though. Land doctrine, armor, infantry tech defense, that's probably what we really could use right now. Explicit minority oppression. Nice. We're at war, I'm gonna go grab this guy first. I wanna do one of these things. Guard unity. Go and do that. Oh, my bad, there was. Update. Let them separate themselves first. Oh, we actually got it, look at that, nice. That'll come in actually quite a bit handy. Depending on where they end up. So they're moving in there, which is actually really good for us. Because when they move in there, we're going to move and take that tile. And then kill them that way. A specter rises in Germany. Oh! They're falling apart too. Ever since the forceful reunification of Germany in 2003, rumors are spread of a shadow cabal of ex Stasi officials working. To bring back the GDR, earlier today these rumors were confirmed true as large portions of the East have erupted in an open rebellion. The Ostleutische Befreiungsfront has declared its intent to restore the GDR and communism. However, the Befreiungsfront encircled Berlin has begun to make its incursions into the city. The German Federal Republic is reported uh, regrouping in the West for a counteroffensive. Whether they can reach Berlin before it falls remains to be seen. Zhu Elliot, revolutionary socialist. Oh, what the heck? The is falling apart too. So like Crimson Republic, that actually sounds really cool. A Crimson Republic? Chiba? Oh my god. That's not good. They already have negative 44% stability. And Catalonia is free, which doesn't make which makes sense. Crimson Front rises. If you don't this, please go ahead. Excuse me, sir. I need you back here, for reals. 
Can we just take Acadia? There you go. And there you go. There we go. Yay! We got almost like 700, over 700 pieces of equipment. Nice. The old Australian Confederacy. I need you guys. I need you guys down here to hold. Just hold everything. Like hold me in your arms. Do we have anyone who can. Ah! Perfect service. Politically indoctrinated. Okay, whatever. Experience soldiers' losses? Holy crap. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, you can only do one. You also have to capitulated, that's fine, whatever. Oh, they're gone. Okay. Surge in division's activity. Say the situation in the Republic was continuous, was to put it generously. However, Haddock knew that there would be setbacks. Hold out of a bygone era fighting tooth and nail to keep the privileges and gluttonous lifestyles. But that was until Dallas Price entered the room and gave him a small stack of papers that he realized just how fragile things were truly shaping up to be. <clears throat> it's an insurgency, James. Price withdrew a flask from his stack vest and took a swig of bourbon. Haddock wrote his brows and mused over the report. It's worse than we expected. Crap. That would be an understatement, Price replied. It's an in infancy, but things are speeding up fast. The guard has been able to so far put in. Uh, putting down small scale resistance, but things won't stay stable for long. He tapped a page in the report outlining a particularly notable division of terrorist operation, 53 casualties, and thousands in damage from just two division of suicide bombers. Haddock exhaled and rubbed his temples in frustration. Festering positive degenerate garbage, put this down, Price. I don't care if you need a level city blocks, just do it. Just get it done. Price put the flask away and gave a curt nod to Haddock before walking out the door, adjusting his rifle in the back while doing so. With pleasure. Um, I guess we'll do that group. There you go, nice. It's better, it's not great, but it's better. Less than 60, huh? You lose a little bit of stability. Give more political power, but. We have done division, so why not? Three gorges attack. Oh boy. Will there be anything left? Three gorges damn attacked. Nice. Military reform of 2016, huh? Outcome of the 20th National Congress. Crippled banking systems. Crippled real estate market. Enemies in the shadows. Inefficient bureaucracy. Sounds pretty normal. Anarch proposed a non-aggression pact. Bow a common struggle for now. Sure, why not? I don't know. Sounds like a good idea. Internal war for the Union. Oh, crap. To the men and women of the Guard, you are entrusted with the most important task will ever be undertaken in the history of the nation. You should be the warriors to fight on the right side of history, to correct the wrongs of the past of the internal war for a Union. The revolution has come so close to being finalized in righteous grasp or the New Republic. However, there are elements in our society who see the revolution brought to an end. The most dangerous person to our glorious new revolution is someone who has the gall to act in their own self-interest. Those who look at the greater good and scoff, the type of citizen to align themselves with the bourgeois traders or the anarchist lunatics. Those who leave their fellow citizens to die on the street, it would, it would help if helping would hinder their day. They put themselves over the state, the physical representation of the will of the people. In doing so, they betray the people. With every breath they take, the revolution weakens. To the guard, high command, and the NCOs, relay this to your men. The time for mercy is over. The cancer that still remains in our nation will be pulled out by the roots. It's time to wipe the slate clean. You have the authority to liberally purge the individual scum from our republic. Burn their houses down and ruin them. Show them the wrath of a betrayed people who have finally been roused to violence. The general war for union shall be waging the hopes for not only a better republic, for a better and safer world. Let us raise up our voices and guns to the streets and send an everlasting message to these cancerous, uh, subversive agents. The republic lives and shall live forevermore. Pleasure to those dissidents. Remove political contestations. Gain internal war for the union. Oh my god. Alright, let's get more divisions out of it. I guess we're going to go this way first. I 
I don't like this plus 60% soldier losses. Hunt down animals. A random control server lose a random small amount of population. Empty the prisons. Dehumanization campaign. Collateral damage doctrine. The benefits of the next operation will increase. Well. Disaster so beyond compare, nice. Wow. Millions are dead in China. Cost of unity. The soldier grab for the prisoners. Uh, to get off the bus. Ethan felt the change. Oh, hold on. Oh. Ethan Abelson was a pretty ordinary life, at least before the nightmare taking hold. He was a gentleman of Rochester's Institute of Technology, pursuing a bachelor's in communications, working as an intern or intern at the Monroe County Democratic Committee. He didn't care much for politics, but he needed the experience of being living with a friend Jack he hadn't seen since elementary school. They played Rainbow Six Siege in Terraria in the free time and chugged coke and talked crap about the professors. God, how did this heck start? And the bus itself felt quite large. And Ethan felt like 30 to 40 other handcuffed and blindfolded. Measurable and defeated just like him, Ethan couldn't see it, but there was definitely a hulking guard at the end of the bus. Whenever anyone had so much as cough, he could hear the sudden footsteps fall by what sounded like a ruthless beating. Oh god, what did I do? Please, effing god, please. Tell me what I do, I'm just like a stupid college douche. Please let me go. Twenty antagonizingly tense minutes after he'd been thrown into the bus. Ethan felt a roll of stop. Maybe they'd let him pledge his loyalty to Haddock in the American Republic. National Union? Whatever they called it. Just please let me try and prove myself I can't die, please. The, uh, the soldier growled for the prisoners to get out of the bus. He felt the change took at his wrist and followed the pull until he felt air on his skin. He could smell oil and hear the god-awful screeching of power machinery coming from nearby. Maybe now he could get those knees in the dirt, roared the soldier. Again, Ethan felt the change on his wrist and he was pulled down. He could hear more footsteps. And the clucking of rifles, tears began streaming down his face. Bam, this is the end. Bam, this is really it. Bam, mom, please help me, mom. Ethan heard the hammer click behind his head. With all the strength he had left, he cried out, Please, God, please, please, let me fight for you. Please, I'll do anything. Please, just don't. His voice died down to whipper as he started quietly sobbing. The soldier began to bury the barrel of the gun to his skull before he pulled the trigger. He taunted, Then why don't you die for the Republic? Nice. The longer we wait, the more time we have more get more command power. Revolutionary count in general, huh? Hmm. Unit upkeep. Butcher. I don't mind that one as much. It's only ten percent compared to everything else. Oh, this guy might be really good for this. So we're gonna go like a Jupiter for this one, actually. Four to three. Are you kidding me, bro? If you want to feel special, fine. You guys are defending there. There you go. The New York Rebellion. Possible. Oh, god dang it. It's a funny thing, power. One moment you have it, you relish it. Oh, god dang it. And roll in it, and then it's a dream you can only have in your sleep. At least that's what it felt like to Greg Richardson, the former administrator of New York, a position appointed with the honors by Haddock himself. His head was pounding, and his vision was blurred, but from a brief look around, he found himself in a cell with soon to be a Metropolitan Correctional Facility. He can remember last night, except for a few vague pictures, and even though it was just painted a bleak picture. He remember the report. Uh, 12,482 divisions were swiftly seized. Uh, most would never see the light of day again. He promised himself a celebratory glass of champagne, then one, two, five, then a seven, then a parade down the street, shouting obscene needs to people about how they'd never have power. Then he remembered a head splitting pain and blackness from there on in. He had bandages on his head, probably stone, yet in these conditions, Richardson found the world a small for the power was funny. An internal memo, number 70731, top secret, situation in New York City, has continued to deteriorate since the deposition of Administrator Richardson. It was still MIA, assumed KIA. A contact with the city has been sporadic, and access is not currently possible without military involvement in the region. The information gathered thus far has primarily come from underground loyal members of the former administrator, headed by assistant, his assistant, Mr. Hanson. Mr. Hanson's limited reports have expressed confidence that he may yet reign in the city, however, another one more concerning piece of information has arisen. We have learned that the divisions have managed to gain access to the launch capabilities of a nuclear device station within the city. This possesses an immediate threat to the safety of the Union, and such should be forwarded to the Father as soon as possible. For plans regarding a division uprising in New York, <clears throat> Uh, drafted. Refer to the documents NY5, NY6, NY7 in the Defense Ministry, as well as currently unpublished NY10. Avi Invictus, how incredibly disappointing. Who's leading this? The Free American Movement. Okay, so they have NYPD oriented military policy, ESP loyalism. Good. Uh, they shall not pass. Oh my god, defense against the country. Plus 50%. United Front against Hatticism. 
Uh, financial media capital, of course. And the classifieds. Wow. Holy crap. Weekly stability minus 50%. Wow. And China has collapsed. Look at that. Well, the cycle begins anew. Words of treason. The SPS dream was the dream of unity. And everything locking, everything marching in lockstep. As gears in the machine as a troop of dancers creating beauty in their coordination. Naturally, a light, slight issue is po posed when you absolutely despise the cog next to you. After all, machines don't have emotions, but humans still do. The efforts of the ESP party leadership to keep the unity within the ranks are, uh, seems to be faltering. An expunge event shows that the cracks are forming, even if the party is trying to cover them up with plaster. On a guard operation against a suspected divisionist, the guard found not just the home of a divisionist home burned down to the ground, but the entire town had presided in as well. After a formal investigation, the investigators found a, a sign found out the Legion had claimed that the divisionist was an immediate existential threat to the Republic and obtained emergency authorization to destroy the target. A fairly dubious claim, just considering the divisionist in question it was in his late 80s. Normal this would be nothing more than a frustrating annoyance for the guard, however. But a question, target in question was a particularly high-profile divisionist, a trophy kill in other words. Ultimately, the guard is furious at this intrusion and believes that the Legion stole, stole their rifle glory, something which, according to boastful soldiers in the Legion, may have been their intention after all. The relationship between the two military branches of the ESP is dramatically cooler now, and joint operations have been indefinitely cancelled so far. No direct conflicts between the two branches have been reported, however, it's obvious things are moving beneath the surface. The press so far has begun to request significantly more personnel to aid in information logistics, while the Legion has begun conducting training exercises against targets with uniforms suspiciously similar to those worn by the Guard. Haddock, for its part. I shot the topic down whenever it crops up in party meetings, usually using a furious stare to do so, as it seems he's immediately disappointed in all parties involved. These are my Legionnaires, insolent children. Central Science Committee, huh? The Shangxi Corporate Territories. The Northern Free Army. Who the? Sun Wu? Bruh. Uh, Alaska alone. As the federal government fell to tyranny in the lower 48 fell to chaos, many Alaska began to push for independence today. These efforts are realized as the Republic of Alaska has formally broken ties with the former federal government. As Russia is unlikely to be a threat for the immediate future, the hashtag stay with us opposition campaign security based arguments that were rejected by the voting populace. Seventy six percent of Alaskans voted to leave. And the United States already began to reach out to Japan, Australia, and several other Russian warlords. Last frontier untamed once more. Boston Defiant. Across the Republic, the drums of war are thundering, the division of scum are facing the righteous justice that they've so long avoided. The Guard have begun their sacred calling, storming the Republic, across the Republic, in a blitz of liberation and justice, leaving a trail of burning corpses in their wake. In response, nearly every city within the Republic has warmly embraced the Guard, eagerly waiting the liberation of their homes from divisionism. Citizens, young and old, have left uh, care packages for munitions and supplies, with some areas even offering divisions, bound and gagged by the public to the Guard to face justice. However, there's only one city which has not been to war with the Guard, Boston. As the mobile guard troops approached the outskirts of Boston, they were shocked to find the city had barricaded the highways and roads into the city, and was brazenly flying the flag of the old regime. At first, we had believed it was the work of a few isolated, weak divisionists who capitalized on the chaos. Uh, the, uh, the revolution has uh, set up token resistance. However, when the citizens of the militia began operating, opening fire on our soldiers, of course, the reality became clear. The Boston had refused. Uh, the Republic's embrace and now stands as a citadel res of resistance, a harborer of divisionism, and a black scene in the glory of the Republic. Each of the Boston bears a banner of the old regime is another day of shame and weakness for the Republic. The outposts of the Republic have surrounded and blockaded the city. But with resources tied up in the eternal war for a union, a direct assault on the city is not currently an option. Regardless, one thing is certain Boston must burn. So, what do we do? Wipe it from the face of this earth? Decrease the duration of internal war for a union until Boston made its choice with some fortune. They may foster its hatred into purpose and further their rule for their own fate by succumbing to the Republican service. Ave. I don't know. A world no longer? The stabilization of the line rebellion's position, the line of socialism, or perhaps some someone operate Oh my okay. I don't think we'd actually nuke Boston. Cool. Um uh someone perhaps operating on his behalf. Uh has sent a PGP sent a message to all those around the world to support the cause of liberty, declaring his intent to overcome the disintegrating federal government and liberate his people from the de 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 depredations of despotic warlords. Let's turn to state and capital. An announcement made an important shift in the line rebellion. From a small scale insurrectionary movement to a major contender in the brewing second American Civil War. The Lion's personal role in the future of the Lion Rebellion remains uncertain, considering that he'd never formally been in charge of anything, and that this is the first time he's ever spoke in, on behalf of the movement as a whole. How worrying. Well, they deserved it. Ah, someone says, yeah, yes, the man finally plays a mod. Help you play the Army, Marine Corps, uh, Air Force faction. Well, eventually we might. Well, it depends what, what we have here to work with. Um, it's 25. We have to improve small airplanes, so. But we have no air XP, so. That doesn't help. You could probably use some machine guns and stuff like that. What's going on with the Lion Rebellion? 
Still nothing, huh? Expansion of the Internal War. The war against the Division of Scum is progressing nicely. There have been some setbacks, of course. Certain uh, rats resisted just as more, with more vigor than we expected. However, the land continues to be washed day in and day out with the blood of the tra traitors regardless. There is, however, some concerning news circulating among the Guard units. Current estimates uh, predict that the war is scheduled and a substantial quantity of anti-Republican forces will remain. This, of course, represents an obvious problem. The Guard, for the part of enthusiastically volunteer to carry on the war, however, the practical issue here is the external threat of the old government. Every bullet used <clears throat> to put down the rats within our borders, one less used against the thralls of the old world. Uh, the, the scheduled end of the war for the Union. Fast approaching Dallas. Uh, Price is formally asked for a decision from Albany. Whether the choice, the division's blood will be spilled. Turn war continues to have threats gone and dead. The government dies first. We'll come back for the division as vermin. Um, someone says Bernie just can't catch a break. Once again, I ask for your help. Nice. Um, so, so divisionism has seeped into the very structure of powers within the uh, Republican Union of America. And we can no longer deny that the eternal conflict looms on the horizon. The Guard, <clears throat> led by a Supreme Commandant, Dallas Price, has felt betrayed by our permission of the Black Legion. <coughs> Excuse me. A group that they view as nothing more than undisciplined, ignorant marauders. The Legion views the Guard with equal contempt. They claim that the Guard has been corrupted by a divisionist ideology, and that it must either be disbanded or completely reformed from the base up. The two greatest defenders against divisionism, the Guard and the Legion, are at each other's throats. It's only a matter of time before the first blow is struck, and the conclusion of the ensuing war will forever shape the course of the Republic. Monumentous decision. Fortify the Foundry. Do not trust them. Preemptive aerial campaign. Honestly, you probably do this one. I did nothing for that. Great. So. Okay. Well, the conflict between the Guard and the Legion has not been broken into proper shooting war. It seems inevitable that it will. And soon. We need to be prepared to secure the state against unrest in the paramilitaries and prevent either organization gaining too much power. Therefore, we should try to pick. The winner in advance, with a thumb on the scales, of course, or failing that, perhaps we try to make sure they both lose. Seize assets? Look at that. We need the political power. Unity campaign? Uh, give more weekly stability. We need influence to go down further, too. Uh, I guess. Smoldering resistance. The wind blows through the scorched streets of Boston, and it carries the faintest whispers of a dead people. It flows through the collapsed skyscrapers and through the irradiated sewers that creeps and winds slowly seeping into the atmosphere of the city. Mother Castellanos will save us. Mother Castellanos, Castellanos will avenge us. Every passing day. The whisper grows faintly louder. His message said with more conviction and confidence by her nurture. The whisper grows into a champ, raisedly shouted throughout the empty streets of the city. Hail Mother of the Apocalypse. Hail Mother of Desillusion. Internal memo 20101, top secret. But the divisionist doctrine still instills mass ignorance because Boston refuses to follow a reason to submit to the Republican rule. At the moment, the citizens of the city are transcended divisionist ideology and have entered a stage of sheer insanity. Look at all this rabid dog of chaos persists. Boston must be put down. Currently, we devise up three plans to answer the chaos in Boston. The first plan, dubbed Operation Octoreteas, involves a brutal reprisal by our armed force against Boston. The military will simply occupy the city and instate strict martial law for the foreseeable future. The second plan, dubbed Operation Ordo, involves the insertion of a guard detail into the city. The guard are the most prized upholders of law and order, and they will be met, meet any challenge thrown at them. However, the House Press would appear to disagree with their assessment, highlighting a supposed severe lack of equipment which would hinder guard operations. These concerns are justifiable, however. We believe they're simply the result of unfounded caution in time which, which requires total action, which leads to final plan Operation Exterminus. Slaughter of the revolutionaries, huh? Exterminatus? Well, it's all division from existence. Oh, we nuke it again. Second like expansion of the internal war. Uh, since the beginning, the war for union has ceaselessly burned through the lands of the Republic. Divisionist leaders have been hunted down and been dealt with, however, it's undeniable that scars have been left wherever forces are of order go. Citizens bogged down with petty notions of community, family, friendship, or whatever else form of the division's propaganda have been acting more and more hesitant to support our guard forces. Thus far, we have attempted to exclusively target those with connections to divisionists or old government party, political parties and organizations. In other words, we focus while look at China. Focus on the upper echelon of divisionists. Well, the average civilian has gone unchecked, however, 
It's obvious now that this may be dangerous in the long run. There's a risk of that perhaps our citizens are less loyal than they say they are. Perhaps they, they see more we've done to their division's leaders and are kept quiet simply out of fear. If this is true, then the risk posed is unacceptable. Divisionism, however, dormant or suppressed, cannot be allowed to exist within a republic. Therefore, our officials have offered a simple solution. Expand the jurisdiction of the Guard of any civilians found to be suspected of supporting the divisions or being synth sympathetic to them, then they'll face the wrath of the Republic. No respite. Genocide of free thought. Give them no respite. Civilian purge policy. With the people now included in the purge, the time is coming to renew our, review our policy towards divisionist traitors. So far, the policy has been simple, summary, execution. However, with such an increase in the scope of the purge, it's been hard to justify our policy in practical terms. Andrew Matthews, the lead party economist, has pointed the excessive damage of killing such a amount, large amount of civilians can do to economy and, and our fighting capacity. Now, Alex Wessers argued that the Republic would better spend its resources re-educating those people instead. Both ministers have offered their own solutions to the purge's inefficiency. Matthews has pro proposed the establishment of a force of a program to better utilize the economic potential of the divisionists. While Wester's proposed the establishment of a black site program, they could reclaim the corrupted minds of the divisionists. Alternatively, we could ensure the unity of the Republic. Labor initiatives. Merciless purge. The divisionists cannot be re educated or utilized to liquidate them. This seems the most suicidal. Um, we've already nuked Boston twice. I kind of want to do this one, the re education set, which makes more sense. Let's go with this one. I don't know, we'll see. We're all here for happy fun times, right? Happy fun times, that's what we call them. Okay. Only 1%, huh? Cowardice. From the beginning, we've known that a republic would stand at odds with the inter international world. However, we believe the precipice that of a kind of nature would be that of an internal international struggle, not us merely exercising our sovereign authority over our citizenry. Boston's rebellion threatened the safety and stability of not just Boston, but of our sovereign republic, and by extension, the families and communities who rely on us for protection and support. It was therefore necessary, by any and all means, to extinguish the painful fires of chaos before it spread, and to do so without hesitation. Our actions were justified of this, we are sure, nevertheless, the war refuses to see the clarity of our decision, and have instead opted to condemn our grand republic as a state. It's an insult. If the world stands against us, and we will march forward alone and return as arbiters of justice, we shall shatter before the might of our republic. Yeah. Actually, mobilizing more, that's weird. Okay, the Republic stands united. Uh, despite our best efforts, it is impossible to stop the flow of information to our Republic. From every corner of the globe, international intelligence agencies of all creeds have managed to smuggle in photos of Boston, our Republic's response, and the shock of the international community. All of which have been previously inaccessible within the Republic. In response to such massive shock of information, which we prepare for the worst, mass unrest, armed resistance, anything and everything. But the worst never came. Instead, we have borne the fruit of our labors from the internal war for a union. Since the beginning of our national reconciliation, the people have learned to see beyond the lies of the old world and to gaze into the utopia that is the new world. Instead of chaos gripping the hearts of our republic, our nation is now sound stronger than before. Under the siege by the forces of the division, our people are now more than ever ready to serve the republic. Ave Invictus. To arms, my legions. Ave Invictus. Well, at least the union support's pretty low. Mass military disorganization, veteran service. Genocide of free thought. Removed uh, next month. Annihilationism and total annihilation. Totalitarianism. Divisionist, 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 divisionist. I guess this is we get to throw on some planes. The party and the party. Boston's legacy. Boston lies in smoldering ruins. It's a pathetic attempt. Uh, a resistance has met its destined fate, and military squads are cracking down on the any pockets of division as still, they, they still breathe. The greatest area of resistance have been the sewer systems in North Dorchester. Guard troops made various attempts to storm the system, but were repelled each time by former Boston police members and terrified civilians. Eventually, a Republican commanding officer opted instead to detonate aerosol bombs at strategic locations to collapse the tunnels and destroy the divisionists of oxygen. Any divisionists who attempted to leave the sewers via manholes faced summary execution. The executions continued until the end of the day, after which the holes were wheeled or shut together, leaving the whoever remained in the sewers to their fate. Now with Boston firmly back under control, the ideas of Batas Rana remaining in the city, uh, lasting active authority, so they may never forget the cost of rebellion. 
Make sure they never forget why they were punished. Strip away their individuality. Mock them on a more personal level. Is being a Bostonian not punishment enough? You kind of strip away their individuality. Mock them on a more personal level. South Concord. Hope everyone else is dealing with problems. National Resolve. That's right. Construction. Uh, why are we converting stuff? I completely ignored this. Oopsie. Well. Let's not convert anything here. I'm sure we're going to need more resources and whatnot, too. But it's going to take... It'll never complete. Okay, then. Good to know. Uh, I kind of doubt if you move this all the way to the very top. Oh, no, actually, it'll get done. Someday. Years from now, but whatever. Dehumanization campaigns? Do it. So what if we don't select a side? That'd be most interesting. The Triple K rises up. Look, look at that. Uh, the declaration from the Confederate government that the clans are enemy combatants and subject to due process has sparked open rebellion. The clan claims that this is the start of Zionist communist crackdown and openly taking territory in the Highlands South after the Million Clan March ended. Um, with an armed stand up. Meanwhile, the Covenant, the sword and armor of the Lord, have launched an allied uprising in the Florida Panhandle. The book is J.C. Webster, self proclaimed God's 10 star general. Christian identity militia has proven extremely extreme, even by clan standards. Let's go. Jeremy Paco, Nation, Nation of Unity. The vicious are stacked like corkwood. The, the streets are calm. The name on the list is crossed out. The last hole in the dirt covered with soil is done. The division of cancer has been exercised from our lands. The scars are everywhere, but there are scars we bear with pride. There will be no more bickering, no more arguing, no more deadlock, no more division. We're a nation unified in thought and purpose, and we should never again be anything but for a union. Oh, look at that. Nice. Experience soldiers' losses goes down, resistance growth goes down. That's actually awesome. We actually did it, my friends. We finally got through this together. Then what? Expansion of the Guard. All units using the Guard Division template will be temporarily disbanded. It's going to go to advanced training. Performed in roughly two months. Uh, what does it say? Training will be disrupted in the event of a conflict between the Guard and the Legion. March of the Revolution. First, make sure your military and economy are prepared to go uh, before going on the warpath. A series of objectives will be set. Completing these objectives will extend the duration of the buff. Huh. Seeking a weak point. Weekly manpower, weekly war support, international volunteers, consolidated strategic center. So we should probably do the same one last. Expansion of the guard. Question of industry. Cultural revolution. Uh, the time's come long since to formalize a guard. I'm betting it permanently to the institution of the public, the republic. Guard officers should be given political commissions and vice versa to ensure that our decision making and our war making work together for our benefit. One and a half is not bad. And there goes a clam. Give more stability, more worse direction of the Republican economy. Oh. Okay. That's cool. Well, let's see what else we can do. Who needed political power, right? Space loaded weapons? Cool. Still all ahead of time, 2025, we'll go with that, and then we're going to go with more construction. We definitely need more guns, and artillery, and all sorts of things. Alright, well, expansion of the guard, we don't have any issues soonish. First step towards securing our economy was to secure the policy. Now that we have adequate forces available to manage production, Haddock has set a date and time to meet with Andrew Matthews, the party's chief economic policymaker, uh, or wonk, uh, to discuss a tact we should use to take in our stewardship and reconstruction of the Republic's industrial system. Uh, sure, yeah. Little Black Book. Great Liberation War, huh? Theory of Permanent Revolution. You want to read about the question of industry, please go ahead. Oh, we had total mobilization. Oh, God. Hmm. 
Which one do we want? Revolutionized economy with a command economy? Prepare for applied hadithism. Use a little, little, little bit of stability. Oh, yeah, let's go probably this one. America's founded on hard work, and hard work will be the foundation of a new America. All production should be taken under direct and immediate state control, with production organized on an as needed basis, with quotas being set and workers being assigned depending on the needs of the state rather than an urgent plan. Industrial question. That's not so much a difference of opinion as, let's say, a difference of priorities. Matthew's proposal is perfectly predictable. Reduce the power at our disposal, both political and computational, to establish an optimized, centrally planned production system that can safeguard the revolution, reconstruction of American industry and keep the economy running efficiently as long after the initial work is done. However, this is the economy the most powerful lever we can press and manipulate society. Perhaps we should design a new system, gearing not towards the maximizing efficiency, but rather towards ensuring absolute and pervasive compliance. Nice. Is there any more political power? The indigenous regimes across the continent are, for the moment, unaware of our internal crisis, but the moment the Guard and Legion finally bring their swords against each other, it will be possible to hide away. We must therefore uh, prepare the rev Republic against a militant opportunism of the divisionist. It, it means halting our offenses, so be it, but we cannot allow the divisions to shift the favor of war simply because of a temporary weakness. Third, Seattle Uprising. <sighs> Shocking news today is Seattle's erupted into a third uprising, this time against the Communists. Out of weeks of party factionalism and power grabs, the internal frictions of the West Coast revolutionaries have finally erupted into open war. The spark was the California re uh, regime's attempt to arrest a number of opposition leaders in Seattle as part of a broader crackdown on factionalism. This was about the barricades and gunfires the city erupted into rioting. After hours of intense fighting, the communists were driven out and the anarchists to control the greater Seattle area. The anarchist spokeswoman, only known as alias by Mother Anarchy, has vowed to purge the red pigs that dared to try to put us back in chains. California has scrambled to mobilize troops, although reports indicate that manpower is stretched thin, containing internal arrests. So much for the tolerant left. Mama, Mother Anarchy. Overzealous revolutionaries. Threatening South. Young Revolution. Well, we like them young. Oh. Plans would be nice, but we have no army XP, so we can't really do anything like that. Oh, we need mechanized, though, don't we? Oh. Actually, what are on those divisions? So we we don't have armored. Um, armor's not very good. Me literally just mechanized. APs. Oh, they need both. They really need both? They need infantry fighting vehicles. These guys need APCs. Motorcycle infantry. You literally need both for that. That is not good. Um, I don't like that. And we need some resources. Oh, that actually hurts you. Look at that. Construction speed, free repair. Few more cap, but still. That's different. John Brown, huh? Strategic prioritization. At certain times. Guardian Hercules, Cosmos, and Princeps. Offense breakthrough. Jagger protocol. Well, let's at least do preparations for applied hadicism. Alright, what else we got around here? Oh, oh, they took Harper's Ferry. Oh, crud. The Dying of the Light. Jesus, 30%, my god. Um... The terrorism roadside ban- oh, shnikes. Roadside banditry has gone on long enough. We're effective immediately. The guard will have all the rules of engagement lifted. A legion insists on fighting dirty, then we'll show them how dirty we can get. Strategic prioritization. In the contest between the guard and the legion, it's undoubtedly clear that the guard were the destined servitors of the Republic. They are the true sword and shield of the nation, and not the deranged blood drinking blood drinkers in the legion. The chariot rolls. The man at the KSNT news desk shifted uh, in his seat uncomfortably. Oh, oh my god. Come on. 
He was brow dripped with sweat as he spoke. The usual professionalism was gone. Hello, I'm Ryan Richards. Uh, you, well, you all know me at this point. <laughs> uh, uh, by the executive decision here at uh, KSNT, we're interrupting regular programming for an emergency news broadcast at about 30 minutes ago. We received this this transmission from the KSNT news van. It was dispatched earlier to cover a ride in the Pauline area, or Pauline area earlier, and uh, uh, she went off the air. Now, I want to warn everybody that the following footage is of highly disturbing c uh, content. We're broadcasting in, in the interest of public safety and awareness. The camera cut to a grainy, shaky footage of a suburban street. The darkness was pierced with the glow of bonfires. The camera swept around, pointing at one of the McMansions. An orange-suited man threw a Molotov cocktail through its tacky bay window while the fellow emerged from a door with a milk crate of liquor. Several bodies hung from the street in the front of the yard. The camera stumbled, bumped into a by a line of National Guardsmen holding a group of young women at gunpoint. The camera lingered on them as the women were forced into a horse trailer before heading off to broadcast more horrors. A line of bloody bodies executed against a garage door. Clad, patch clad militia members squabbling with tattooed bikers over a classic V8 Impala. He was screaming as men on the cherry picker crucified them to the wooden electric poles, and on the roof of a police car, his face lit blue and red from the still flashing lights. A man. He spoke in a megaphone, swooping over his assembled men. He did not scream in rage or frenzy, and though his voice bellowed, it not, lost none of its calculation of quiet venom. It was a calm, serene, and methodical, and dripping with contempt. Hedonic, hed hedonic, hedonic a treadmill that has fed the climate collapse. This is egalitarianism. Because to be equal means equality in resources, which means that the masses in your blind, slothful degeneracy granted the governmental industrial complex a license to rip the earth and waste its limited resources in the name of producing baubles and opioids, dueling you to a blind state of minus consumerism, not caring about the toxic runoff, or the CO2 being pumped out, or the earth to spoil for your suburban boxes. No, as long as you could drive your SUVs and hoard plastic trinkets, you'd vote for whoever would fill your trough with more slop. Home again, screaming hysterically as she was strapped to the closest pole. Your sins against are great against America. Our great, our great America. And so by thy punishment shall be great. Look around you in your final moment. Look at the ruins of this disgusting cul-de-sac. The blood of McMansions which mar this land. Hear the wailing of your women, the screams of the dying, the crackling of fire. This is the price of pride, the price of, of sloth, the price of lust, gluttony, envy, and greed. The price of your consumerism and your delusionary quality in which the mewing weak were allowed to chain the strong. Oh God, oh God, the woman screamed. The crumb of Pandan, capturing the KSNT news badge, hung around her neck and the gasoline being poured on her. God, said the man on the podium, what speak you of God? For if thy sins were not great, God would have sent me as a scourge. Or not sent me. As he said this, the man pulled a flare gun from his belly, took aim, fired, and the reporter went up in flames and screams. The feet cut to stack in the back of the news desk. Ryan Richards' hands were trembling. Evacuation orders are in place for the greater Topeka area. Please, flee as soon as you possibly can. The provisional governor is uh, deploying troops to the uh, area. And if you're in Pauline, he looked up at his eyes watery. God help you. God help all of us. Oh, funnel and defensive equipment. The guard is a cold, calculating force completely opposed to the wild and savage spirit of the Legion. If we don't provide the guard with sufficient entrenchment and defensive equipment, they'll be overwhelmed with the destructive inferno of the Legion. Clearly, just like backups. Turns out the guard complaints over equipment shortages weren't entirely unfounded after all, or after an audit of logistical and distribution activities. We found numerous areas where the efficiency was lacking. The people behind these failures will hand it over to the guard. Hand it over to the guard to explain themselves. Prioritize guard motorization fulfillments. Of the era both protocol. We are well aware of press's desire, so be it. It must exist inside. The Guard and the Legion must exist inside a finally defined area of weakness. They must be weak enough that the war does not drag the Republic down with them, but not so weak as to drag the war out longer than necessary. It is therefore our responsibility to ensure that they meet this threshold. Gulf Coast. Or Gulf Cartel. Drug trade, huh? Oh, the Heartland. Zone Echo. Oh, God. Giant Mount com Command. Sandbox. Zone Echo. Expansion of the Guard. The time's going to transform the Guard from street paramilitary to proper military units. Our Guardians shall undergo advanced training in combat, counter insurgency inf information, warfare. Well, we take two months to cycle them through all. They shall return to the front lines truly ready to serve the Republic. Front line. I don't know which one we want. Stacy Ape. What the frick? Social liberal. What?
Well, everyone, um, unfortunately, the game keeps crashing. Um, even though we're going to go slower on this speed, it keeps crashing, and there's nothing we can do to keep going forward, unfortunately. Um, that, which really, really sucks, because we spent all this time trying to get to where we should be, and then it, it don't work. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's un quite unfortunate that it's not working. Um, so I apologize for that. This video's gone long enough, though. If I, I'll try to make it work off screen, but if not, then I can't really do much about it, and I apologize. So, hey, if you enjoyed the video, though, regardless, uh, leave a like. Oh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I guess I'll see you tomorrow, maybe in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.